Und damit begrüßen wir Sie recht herzlich zur CF Moto Racing Brüssel GP Teams. Eine Teampräsentation, auf die wir lange gewartet haben. Eine Teampräsentation, die mir auch ganz besonders am Herzen liegt, denn bereits seit 2018 sind wir mit dem Team so ein bisschen verwandelt und es geht immer den Schritt weiter in der Weltmeisterschaft und sie arbeiten sich stetig nach vorne und machen auch die ein oder andere harte Erfahrung. Über all die Konstellationen werden wir gleich im Anschluss reden. Kurz zuvor aber bitte der Hinweis, es wird so sein, dass wir natürlich global agieren und somit auch jetzt ins Englische umswitchen. Ich hoffe, ihr bleibt trotzdem dran, ich hoffe, ihr habt trotzdem euer Vergnügen und werdet mehr erfahren vom Team. So, pretty warm welcome from my side also for the English spectators or for the global spectators. We will switch now the language before. It was uh, since 2018 a couple of experience you have to make. Uh, maybe in 21 that was the toughest one. Um, let us a bit know how now your feeling is if you look back to the 21 season and uh, for sure also with a big smile how motivated you are to get into the new season 22. Yeah, um, yeah, as you know, as you said, um, 21 season was for, for us, I think also for the motorsports worldwide. Yeah, a tough season, worst season what we had, and we started the season quite well. We had um, good results in top 10 with both riders, and and when we come from uh, 20, 2020 season, so it was a big step. But at the end, what happened in Mugello is um, for, for us, for the whole team, it was a big shock. And yeah, this um, motivation go down, and was not easy to keep the team together in because everyone was so close to Jason and but then we after summer break we focused we had a new rider Philip Salac to come to join our team to finish the season and so we had some uh, yeah with Philip we had some good results to also in Valencia and yeah but still yeah we are set for the 21 season but At the end, it's a now it's a new year, 22, and I think yeah, it will yeah as you said, have smile because after this season, it need to come a new season and a good one. So yeah, I'm focused now. I'm happy to yeah, have a new year. But uh, Tom Lutti is also um, coming to the team, and I think there are big expectations about his knowledge and uh, experience he made as a former racer. Yeah, Tom is joining our team. It was um, hard work to uh, to get him because he was quite a um, yeah good writer in Moto 2 the, all the years. And yeah, then at the end we come together also with his management because they are the Swiss market or the Swiss writer with Jason. We were close in contact with Tom and the management. And then when I heard that he will finish his career, I go directly <laughs> and take him yeah. because for for me it's. Uh, Yeah, it was a um, good, good, really good choice because um, after these five years, what I'm, all the experience what I made in the racing, still in my heart, or is for our family business in the logistics. And yeah, uh, so I have Tom on my side from the sports side. And for me, okay, for me, the interesting part is yes, from the management side of the team. But from the small side, we have Tom, and also last year we make a good step to get um, Massimo Cabana for the new year, for the new season as a technical director. It was a shame that Stefan uh, left us, but also I can understand after this season 21. But with Massimo from Rossini Racing, and he made um, Rocco Martin, we had big fights with him, and we see each other in Park Fame with Marco and Rocco Martin. So to get him in our team, I think, yeah, it's. Quite good, and I'm happy that Tom and Massimo will join me, and we go on. So you have a great stru structure now in the team. Next to you, some people where you've been able to trust, and for sure everything will run fine. On the other hand, you need the support of strong partners. So you said before you really like to manage the team. You did that pretty well. I guess. <laughs> yes, <laughs> all the years. Now the future. All the years, yeah. I think for us um, was um, after the Mahindra times and in 18 we come, we made the step with KTM. Was a big step for us, which helped us a lot. And now for the new year we have um, uh, CF Moto 
as um, yeah, where we are the team for them as a factory team. And when I heard this, so last year when we made the first um, speakings together, I was quite happy to have the have CF Moto as a as a partner and also as a factory behind, as a big factory behind, and. To come. So the big motivation behind this, and maybe we have a chance to talk about it a bit more into details, because Markus Ferch is joining us, and uh, he knows everything about the technical side, and maybe also from the support and the hard from our CEO, Mr. Lai, and the whole senior management team in China. It's exciting for us. This is one big next step for us also. So this is really exciting. And I want to use the next couple of minutes to give you a high level introduction of the CF Moto company. CF Moto, who are we? CF Moto is a power sport and uh, our headquarters uh, cover a building area of roughly 280,000 square meters. So very substantial. We have two world-class plants there with uh, all the necessary bells and features, office building, test track. For us in the four-wheel world, we are extremely successful with what we do. We are by far the biggest manufacturer for Europe. We are growing fast in other global regions. And now for us, it is time to uh, take this success and also take it over to the motorcycle side. This is why we are here. So. We will grow the motorcycle business in the next couple of years. And um, in China, we are already very well known. So in, in the domestic market, we are very well known. And now we are taking this international. And um, we have invested a lot of money in our product portfolio so far. And I won't go into details because it would lead us, uh, you know, uh, it would take too long. But we have six different motorcycle families, as we call them, from naked bikes um, via sporty bikes via and uh, also touring bikes. And for us, uh, what is really uh, important for the European market, we will also now introduce our 800 MT, which is a premium mid-size adventure bike. Also, CF Moto, um, next slide, please. Also, CF Moto, domestically has been engaging in racing for, for quite a while. Uh, since 2010, uh, we are engaging in, in domestic racing and is since 2017, uh, we are the first Chinese manufacturer that really runs a CF Moto racing academy or race academy. And since then we have had about 18,000 riders that we have trained in this racing academy. So quite substantial. Also, we are the only Chinese manufacturer that participated in the Isle of Man with our own product. And uh, we were successful in 2016, where we could uh, reach the fourth place in the lightweight class with our rider, Gary Johnson. But now, and I think this is why we're here today, uh, it's the next big step. So we are very, very happy. And uh, I'm happy that uh, with the Crystal GP team, we found a really, really good and, and experienced partner. And so this is our next step to enter the Moto3. And, and we see this as one step in a, in a more long-term strategy. So um, we could see some more engagements there. But with that, I come to an end with my presentation and hand back to Florian and Stefan. Thank you. Together, and uh, I think you are pretty happy to make the step now also with CF Moto Racing Bristol GP to get this team on pretty strong feet. Yes, sure. And uh, as Markus already mentioned, there is a, a strong cooperation in China uh, with this joint venture that we have there. And when we heard in, in summer last year that there is an interest to, to make the step into racing, for sure, we, we were quite happy to join this project and then to also involve our long-term partner, Bristol GP, into this uh, project was the, the natural way for us to go. And now we are happy to show our bikes. Oh, I think I hear something. Maybe, yeah, yes, I hear also. Maybe our riders. Do it. Do it. Do it. 
Are you ready for the new season? Are you ready for 2022? to see you all smiling, even you Flo. Yeah. Uh, I know last year wasn't that possible. I think it's the best sign to let everybody know that the whole team is ready for the 2022 season and is better in shape than ever before because you have a lot of experience, you made or you have to made a lot of experience, which we want to say to everybody, put the chest out, <laughs> work for it. And uh, I think uh, you will have great results. Get a trailer to let you guys know what the question was and then uh, I will involve the people who has to talk about it. 大家好，我是洪毅啊，我现在呢人正在沙特啊，二零二二年达喀尔拉力赛的比赛的大营的现场。那我平时呢是一个汽车摩托车栏目的制作人和主持人，当然了啊，我也参与着摩托车运动，也
using it for, for your style, for your fitness, all that kind of stuff? Yeah, uh, I like motocross. Uh, I like practicing. I like uh, this type of movement that the bike, uh, yeah, you know, in one corner from, of motocross, the bike is moving a lot of times, uh, so you can manage how to control this, and also this makes uh, you work hard physically. So later when you go on to road, uh, road racing, it's really good. But I personally, what I like training most is road racing. I like the speed, so uh, motocross, it's a little, little part of my training. I like the speed. So for you? No, for me, it's more big part of my training. I mm. do a lot of motocross and flat track. Enduro, three or four years ago, I do one of my first race on, on, of enduro. But yeah, it's, it's good for training, but also it's more dangerous than the, the speed bike. But yeah, I like a lot of training and do a little bit more the, the experience when the, the road bike slide and than the feelings on the bike. So the feeling is prepared well on the other on one side. On the other side, the third question was also. What's your expectation for the season 2022? I mean, it's the same for Florian, it's hard to say, but maybe you can give us a, a short answer. Yeah, uh, expectations are, yeah, you know, we have a factory uh, in our team, so expectations are obviously high. Uh, we are fighting for this, uh, so yeah, uh, we'll try, we'll give our, our best and try to, to go with uh, Prustel and CF Moto to the top. Yeah, me too. Uh, <laughs> Check. Yeah, put the CF Moto and Prostel in the top. And yeah, it's difficult to say now, but I think all the riders won't win. And this is the goal. But it's better to go race by race and stay constant in the front. So I hope we've been able to answer the questions and uh, we just wish. A happy new year to every Chinese people and uh, have a good time. Hola a todos, I'm Haran Jin, the MotoGP commentator from GBOT.TV China and uh, I have two questions for each rider. So first question is to Xavi, how was your experience in VR46 Ranch last month and could you please share us with some little stories about it? And the second question is to Carlos. You have been training so hard this winter and what is your favorite way to train it in your daily life and what is your main goal for this season? Thank you guys, muchas gracias. This is a really interesting question you have because uh, for me it's immediately the question to Xavi. How was the experience on a 4R46 range riding, sliding, enjoying the whole day so give us maybe a bit inside stories how far you can go whatever <laughs> no it's really nice uh, the experience there because you you stay in in the track with a lot of important people in the world of motorcycles uh, stay with valentino and all the motor gp riders in the in the track is, is very nice and also the experience uh, the track was very different that i stay running in the winter in Spain and for something to, to see uh, it's nice because out the track you you speak with another riders mm -hmm. from MotoGP and this is very nice and, and well I like it the experience. The experience also to ride with the other riders was maybe for you also a big step to see all these difference what you've been able to maybe push a bit further where you are now. So you've been fully in the pack or you've been having to learn a lot from the other guys day by day? Uh, yeah, I, I learned from the Italian riders from the Uber 46 uh, because he trains a lot of in, in the circuit. Yeah. And that is really difficult, the, the sand of the track, because it's asphalt and, and put the, the sand, mm -hmm. and the style is very different. Mm -hmm. yeah, the first season is more to learn and, and learn what you need for traction yeah. and yeah. everything. But 
but yeah, uh, I learn a lot from, from this experience. New experience makes next steps possible. So that's, that's one point. And, and you did a different way. Uh, he, he was also asking or telling us that you have a hard winter and you've been working very hard, which is uh, obviously. Um, from the experience you have and also like he, he asked, your favorite daily training and your goal for the season. I mean, is it also something in your training experience that you have that goal all in mind, which is motivating you a lot? Yeah, you know, uh, every year uh, when you arrive to to the track, uh, to, to Qatar, uh, you, you want to be at 100%. But uh, year by year, you you know uh, what to improve for the next year. Uh, so yeah, uh, last year uh, I felt that I I needed uh, this this speed feeling that during three months I couldn't couldn't do it. Uh, so I was training in only in kartings, and for me this was a little bit hard to to adapt. Uh, so this year I changed completely my my mentality, and yeah I. I do a lot of laps in, in big trucks uh, with my 600 and yeah, I was uh, enjoying like a kid every lap, uh, it was uh, amazing and then also I like uh, cycling, uh, it's cy cycling and running are uh, both the sports that I also love, uh, just uh, enjoying every day of my life but yes, uh, training hard for then in the bike, enjoy and just go in full gas. Full gas is for sure so the main goal so we hope that we answer all these questions and uh, we wish just a happy new year to every Chinese guy back home there.